Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Chris, your sneaker professor. Back with another discussion on Mikey Williams because we just found out that he's entered the transfer portal. I don't think he should have done that, but I get it. I completely get it. But I can't start this off without explaining why it's really disheartening to see Mikey leave Memphis before he ever gets a chance. Kid is amazing. Anybody who says overrated and all of this other stuff, I, there's a level of hating that happens when you deal with a kid who is this talented. And it, it's adults. It, there, there are people who are simply down talking this kid, man. And it's, it's almost, I have a son and it's kind of unsettling to watch how adults talk about a teenager. It doesn't matter that he is rich or that he earned this NIL deal. It matters that this is someone's son, this is someone's brother. This is a kid who's just getting ready to walk into the, uh, an adult life. But because he is who he is, he's been placed in a position of influence and power. Now, I got to explain why a sneaker industry analyst is having a conversation about a high school star athlete coming to Memphis. Um, why do I have such an interest in this story? Um, I was a high school basketball coach in San Diego. Anybody who knows me or knows my story knows that I was a head coach out in San Diego. Uh, everybody knows I care about three college basketball programs. That's San Diego State where I'm an alum, um, that's Memphis, my hometown, and Miami, and that's because my son goes to Miami. He goes to the U. But that's, uh, don't let me digress. When I heard that Mikey was coming to Memphis, I was excited because a Dago kid, a San Diego kid, that I was six degrees of separation from would allow for like a full circle moment for my own Dago to Memphis story, Right? Now, from a business standpoint, it's actually important that I look at what Mikey is in regards to NIL and Puma. Because I'm a sneaker industry analyst, I have to talk about marketing strategy to different people in the industry. That's what this channel is built on. If you've been to this site and this channel before, you know that. So this is a story that hits me in different ways. But primarily as a parent, man, it's just really frustrating to see how adults talk about kids. And it's also a bit frustrating that Mikey's entered the transfer portal and I'll never get to see Mikey in Memphis Blue. I thought he would have been amazing. So let's get into this and look at what the facts are. All right, let's look at the facts. If you see next to me, you see that he had pled guilty in this no case. But here are the facts of Mikey's case. So just go with me and listen. Just listen and follow along. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm simply presenting a discussion on the topic. He was not convicted of anything. He pled guilty to issuing a threat and brandishing a firearm. Now, the incident happened shortly before midnight on March 27th. Five people came to Mikey's house in a white Tesla. Mikey Williams did not know they were coming. And the report explains he appeared upset they had come to his house and he asked them to leave several times. Now, when there was not a fast response, he then began issuing threats. Now, the records of this case show no one saw him shoot the gun. And that's why these felony charges that were amounting to 30 years that everyone focuses on, oh, he was going to get 30 years. That's why they were reduced to what is going to be a misdemeanor in August. Because let's be real, 
most of these people who are calling this kid a criminal because he pled guilty to a lesser charge are technically correct. But this is what happened. Mikey made a deal so he could get back to basketball as soon as he could. I tend to think he probably should have fought, but let me ask you a few questions. And this isn't live, so I can't ask you. Here are my questions for anybody, for any of you. If you're watching this, when you read the reports, if Mikey didn't know these people were coming to his house, when they arrived, it was midnight. It was late. Now, if you understand Mikey's schedule in basketball routine, more than likely, and this is an assumption, he probably had training early in the morning. He simply wanted people away from his home. Now, did he go too far in brandishing a gun? Definitely. Was anyone hurt? No. Do you think it's right to convict someone for a threat, especially a person asking someone to leave their home? If unwanted visitors, right, no matter the circumstance, were asked to leave and didn't, Especially if the homeowner, which is reported in the case, is visibly agitated. Let's be real. Who's really at fault here? The people who decided to come to the house, the roommate. There are a lot of different factors where this could go. This is not a black and white, clear cut case. There was property damage, though. So something had to be done. Something had to be done. And I'm not making excuses for Mikey. I'm simply laying out what the reality of this case is. Now, I don't want to make this uncomfortable at all. I don't. But there's an uncomfortable truth for sports and stars. Professional athletes have been murdered on more occasions than anyone would ever want to discuss. Now, you see, I'm scrolling through this. And I'm trying to get to one in particular and leave the picture there. Because if you don't know, and this is this one really hits home, which was Lorenz and Wright, because he's a Memphian and this happened down the street from my office with Lorenz and Wright. You never know what's going to happen. But Ben Wilson is a cautionary tale. If you don't know who Ben Wilson is, look it up. One of the greatest players to that would have come out of Simeon High School, Derrick Rose's high school. Um, gosh, everybody's. When you think about great players from Chicago, the guys that went to Simeon, man, amazing players. But Ben Wilson was shot at the age of 17. And there's no NIL or anything else around Biggie. He wasn't rich. This is in the 80s. It's 1984. And like I said, I don't want to make this a dark discussion by bringing up something so sad in high school basketball. But think about it. Five people arriving at the home of an athlete at midnight. This thing could have ended much differently. And once again, I'm not justifying anything here. I'm simply giving an alternative discussion in that this could have been a, a whole lot worse. And I'm glad it wasn't. And I don't want to stay in this dark area. I want to transition this discussion. And I want to transition it to the University of Memphis. OK. And the reason I want to bring this up and transition it to the University of Memphis, because Penny Hardaway's ability to recruit is next level. He's an amazing recruiter. He's an amazing person for the city of Memphis. But his recruitment is incredible, especially with the transfer portal. 
and I'm shifting this discussion intentionally because that got way, way too dark. There's something interesting in Penny's current strategy of utilizing the transfer portal. Unlike other elite programs, the University of Memphis Tigers play in an NBA arena. Now, I'm pulling this over to this side so you can see this article that I'm getting into a discussion on now. And I'm talking about in regard to Mikey and everything that's happening here. The relationship that the Grizzlies have with the University of Memphis, it requires the Tigers to meet certain requirements that other elite programs around the country do not have to face. So where am I going with this? Because Memphis does not play on campus. The program has had a lot of issues with uh, filling the seats and filling up the stands. Memphis itself doesn't have a great transit system. And the students have to find a way to get to the FedEx Forum to watch their college team play. This almost makes Memphis like a, a commuter school in a sense when you think about athletics because nothing is on campus. Um, they have to get their way to the FedEx Forum. They have to pay for parking. They have to utilize buses from the campus. There's all these different things. During the winter break, people are at home. Nobody's coming. Nobody's going, and it's hard and difficult to fill the FedEx Forum. And when Memphis does not fill the FedEx Forum, and we scroll down, we can see the you know attendance. When they don't fill the FedEx Forum, they lose out on financial opportunities. But if we make a comparison to San Diego State, my college, and Viejas Arena, you know, which is on campus, it seats around 12,000 people, or we make a comparison to, to Cameron Indoor Stadium, and there are 9,000 seats, which is on campus. Those are on-campus facilities. You know what? I, I'm pretty sure somebody's like, well, what, is, what does this have to do with Penny, Mikey, and the U of M? Mikey's a kid with 3.4 million followers on social media. Kid's a star. He's a star. Now, don't let me deviate. If you flash back to John Calipari's teams at Memphis, here's something that people need to think about and consider. Calipari's teams always had a strong Memphis contingent. Always. Always. And that inspires Memphis, which is a blue-collar city. And this blue-collar city supported the program. People came to those games. So you have to think about Cal and how Memphis was as a program. And you think about athletes like Antonio Anderson, Andre Allen, Pierre Niles, Tariq Black. The city of Memphis was always represented on the University of Memphis basketball team. Right? This means that you could bring in a Derrick Rose. And you can keep Memphians engaged. You have this outside talent coming in and you still keep the city engaged. Today, though, the transfer portal is basically removing the hometown element from the University of Memphis. And this can be kind of problematic, but this is Penny's recruitment strategy. And it's creating a situation where the team can only get excited by winning or big programs coming into play. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. But Penny is not landing Memphis talent and keeping Memphis talent like Cal was. When Penny does get the talent, they transfer. Penny's relying on players coming into the program who are not going to be four-year locally known talents like, like a Willie Kemp, right? Willie Kemp is now the head coach at Whitehaven. Willie Kemp's doing such amazing work in the city. A fantastic man. He was a four-year player for the University of Memphis. That's the type of player that people in Memphis will go and see. They know that kid. So you got Penny with these teams that are not one and done like uh, Cal at Kentucky. You have a bunch of older players coming into Memphis to play. And the city's not familiar with those people other than just conversation online and recruitment talk and things like that. City's not familiar with these guys. You do have Malcolm Dandridge on the roster currently. You have Joe Cooper. You have Jaden Hardaway listed as Memphis. But those names, 
you know, Malcolm, no, no disrespect. I love Malcolm Dandridge. No respect, but the names are not enough to inspire Memphians to come out and fill the FedEx form. Get this back to Mikey. Mikey could have been Penny's Derrick Rose. Now, of course, of course, his criminal complaint made it difficult to rally around, you know, the kid. It, it, it just does. I'm not overlooking that. Don't think I am. But Mikey Williams was doing the work. His lawyer, his family, they continuously asked Memphis to let Mikey compete. Now, if Memphis was not going to do that, something else should have been worked out. The family, the lawyer, the kid, everybody's lobbying the school. And this is where it gets really interesting. I was able to secure, and I, I want to show this picture, but I was able to secure evidence that Mikey attained a 3.5 or higher GPA enrolled in 12 or more credit hours for the fall 2023 semester. This means that Mikey was on the dean's list at the University of Memphis. The kid was on the dean's list. We go back to everything that people write about Mikey. We go back to these adults who talk crazy about the kid in these comment sections. But nobody talks about the fact that this this is a kid, man, who was doing the work. He was getting things done. You go back and look at the case and you understand that Mikey admitted guilt to criminal threat. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I won't even pretend to be. I do research and write papers for sneaker companies and people at hedge funds. <laughs> That's what I do. And I used to be a basketball coach and I'm definitely not a lawyer. But what Mikey's lawyers probably could have done is looked into the defense of property, the laws around defense of property. His legal team, and I put this up over here next to me that you can see, could have pursued a case based on the defense of his property. But that would have prolonged Mikey's time away from the court. It would have taken years for this to go in and he has to fight this case and he definitely wouldn't have been able to enroll in school and all this other stuff to prepare himself to go and compete. Pursuing defensive property would have taken him away from the court even longer. It also would call into question property damage. But if the legal team would have failed to defend Mikey, he would have potentially had 30 years. And then this would become a tragic tale of lost opportunity. And that's not what needed to be done. We don't need this tragic tale. Mikey's never been in trouble. Never been in trouble. All right. He, he just he's never been in trouble. When, when you go back and look through everything and everywhere I search and look, I find that he was an honor roll student. Um, and this is what's interesting. I don't I think they took the plea. Now, I'm on the outside looking in as much as I can go and search and find information. I'm on the outside. But I think he took that plea because he knew he wasn't going to violate any aspect of the plea and that everything was going to be fine. And he and the family thought that he would at least be able to get back on the court and get the benefit of being a student athlete, learning from Penny Hardaway and one of the best staffs in the country. All of the things that happened around Mikey happened because of his celebrity status. It made him a target. An unwelcome visit to his home cost this kid his opportunities and partnerships. Mikey lost his position as one of the faces of Puma. And now sitting out a full year, sitting out a full year with no access to college level training 
in the college program, it means that he's not getting the instruction critical to his development as a potential pro from a legendary basketball player who's the head coach there. The U of M was not allowing him to practice with the team. I get that. But he was completing his requirements. The dude has a 3.7 GPA as on the dean's list. He maintained these grades that were good enough for that. The reason I'm doing this video is because maybe, maybe, if someone in the position at the U of M sees this, maybe they say, hey, this is a great opportunity to, one, fill the stands. Even if he's not planning, he's just at the game, kids are going to come to the game. And I'm not saying use him or pimp him. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you just let this dude practice and get training under Penny and that staff, that just doesn't seem like a lot to ask. Mikey in Memphis could be the M&M &M that we always needed for this program to get to back, get basically back to where it was with John Calipari. Now, Penny's doing that as on, on his own. The program is headed that way. But there is not a lot of excitement around a lot of guys who are older, who are going to be gone, and you have to constantly rebuild. Memphis could simply allow the young cat to practice with the team. Make him the opposing team's best player in practice. Make him that. Let him get out there and play. Let him get training. Let him get instruction. He's proving that he's a fantastic student. I'm hoping that the kid doesn't leave. I'm hoping that he doesn't leave. I hope that something can be reconciled, but it's sounding like he's gone. And that's unfortunate. Because as I said in the previous video when I did this, I promise you this will be a negative recruitment tactic, a tactic that's going to be used where people say that this college is scary, shaky, won't make difficult decisions. Will that affect Penny completely? Probably not. Dude's an amazing recruiter. I think Penny did everything he could to get Mikey on the court or at least get Mikey back in practices. I think the University of Memphis messed this up. And I hope that the University of Memphis fixes it and apologizes even and says, yo, we appreciate that kid making the Dean's List. We appreciate that kid putting in the work. Let's get him in here. Y'all guys stay. Let's get him on the court in 2024 with some instruction under his belt and let's go have the best year that we can have on top of what's happening right now. And that's all I'm saying. Mikey's an amazing player. He made a mistake. And I'm, I'm of the mind that we have to stop condemning kids because he's a kid. He's a teenager, man. I don't care how rich he is. I don't care if you call your kid a professional or a pro or you call him an adult and everything else. Man, this is a kid, man. It's a kid. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to agitate anybody or talk crazy to anyone or make you think I'm a sneaker dude who was really looking forward to this kid balling for the University of Memphis. I was looking forward to it, and I hope it can still happen. I hope things can be reconciled. Because if he's not enrolled, he's fine for next year. If you're enrolled in school, you have to take a full load. You have to have 24 units carried over to the following year. He has 12 units or more already. He can play next year. He's good. We have to figure out how to make this right. And that's all I'm saying. Uh, I'll get back to the sneaker talk tomorrow, next day, whatever. I appreciate you guys that watched this. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.